Okay, so today we're going to be discussing this concept of lazy literature, which is a term that one of my colleagues in the computer science department came up with. Uh, his name's Dan. He's a really nice fellow. Take a class with him if you can ever take a class with him. It'll be exciting. Uh, so the goal over the next couple of lectures are going to be to write a version 1 and version 2.0 of a algorithm that's going to consume text and then generate text that sounds like the text that was consumed. Okay, with the caveat that the text that we're going to generate will be gibberish. Right? It's going to be like I described it like this in the other class. Like I could speak gibberish, but you can like know what the gibberish is. So if I'm like baba da boo, yeah to be, right? That that what kind of gib like that, that's obviously French gibberish, right? Uh, <laughs> But the point is, if I read in a, a, a corpus of information, that a corpus is a collection of texts, and I'll show you the ones that we have. Um, where is it? Here. Okay. So we have uh, Alice in Wonderland. So this is a book by Lewis Carroll. And I think these are the, oh, the first three Lord of the Ring books. Should I just read them today? Should I just read the Lord of the Rings instead of a lecture? We're not learning about hobbits today, perhaps some, sometime else. Um, and what I'm going to do tonight is one of my students from the other class, the smarter class, hey, I want you guys to be fired up for the exam and reverse this trend. But um, they collected a corpus of Dr. Seuss's writing, because I think it will be really cool to generate Dr. Seuss sounding books. So today we're going to try and write any program that's going to generate Lewis Alice in Wonderland sounding gibberish, or Lord of the Rings sounding gibberish. So this is a very open-ended question, right? I don't want you guys to get too used to questions where like, there's a very specific uh, set of instructions given to you. You're not going to go work at Google, and they're not going to say, oh, hello, today can you just convert this while loop to a for loop for me? Like, that's not how programming works in the wild, right? You're going to be given problems, which you're going to have to apply problem solving to in order to solve. Um, and as you move through computer science, we're going to be giving you more and more tools to solve problems with, tools and techniques. But we'll leave that for another day. Now, you're going to be taking a course in data structures, I think, in the second year. And you may not realize how important data structures are. But it's often the case, once you find the right way, like even figuring out how to represent your answer requires consideration. And it is often the case that when you find the right representation for your answer, that, that, that gives you the solution to finding the answer. So that in mind, if I give you the following piece of text, what are the component elements that we're going to have to analyze here? Like, what are, what are the important pieces of information that we could take from this to generate new pieces of text? Yeah. Sure, we can have a collection of the, of the unique set of words found in this. So, Dan played, walk, said, so fast, ball. That would be one. Like I'm really asking, I'm soliciting ideas from you. Like, if, how would you try and generate text that sounded like other text? Yeah. Pardon me. So you're trying to like. I think you're just basically saying we should pull as much statistical information out of the book as possible. Like average sentence length, average average word length, average length of a paragraph. I think that's going even too far, right? Because we, before we start talking about the length, how do we even generate one sentence, one gibberish sentence? And then we can talk about uh, everything else. Yeah. That would require like the next 10 years, right? It's, it's not easy. So <laughs> I used to work for, I used to work in the communications department until I quit. That's what I was doing in Australia. And I was writing programs to try and analyze pieces of text like this. And it's actually extremely complicated to try to de, uh, What's the opposite of assemble? Dissemble. <laughs> disassemble. Uh, English is stupid. Uh, disassemble uh, these sentences into their component, like parts of grammar is extremely difficult. Because English doesn't follow any type of like actual set of rules, at least not a rule set that's unambiguous as required by computer science. Do you know who no Noam Chomsky is? Yeah, there's a notion of the English language being something so you guys will take a whole course in languages. Hopefully, I'll get to teach it to you because I really like that course. 
But you'll learn about being Chomsky complete. And like Chomsky complete is where like English, the English language lives. And it basically just means it's like pseudo generated. Like there is no instruction that generates all English sentences. Right, so, and anyway, that, that's, I, I can go much farther in that direction, but I want to be able to do it today, right? So unless you have a method for identifying the component parts of a sentence that I can implement sitting here, I don't think that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's going to be possible, yeah. Okay, like that's good. Like we're 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 boiling down the problem to something that's more tangible, right? But then you can also like you can have like a couple of lists like um whatever and then later on when we uh we're supposed to print the list, we can just uh randomly choose them. So can... Okay, these are all good answers. Um I'm just gonna okay, one more and then I'll tell you what I, we're gonna do. Yeah. So like with for sentence generation we can like a specific we can use like emulator and like random No but like how do I pick the first word of my gibberish sentence? Like, let's start there, right? I need to start a new sentence, right? I'm trying to generate new text. What's the first word that I should pick? What's the first word that I should pick my first sentence? Yeah. Okay, but I can just, why not just randomly generate any types of words? Like, remember, we want, it, we want to make it sound like Lord of the Rings. This is the last one, right? Because... Yes. All of you missed this one word that I was looking for, and this word is context, right? Word context is important, right? We care, an, an important piece of information in that text up there is that Dan can be followed by three words, played, walked, or said, right? So if I store the information from this piece of text as that dictionary that's underneath there, I can, I can come up with a dictionary that says, well, in this book, the word Dan can be followed by the word played, walked, or fast. The word played can be followed by ball. And then here's the way that I can generate a new sentence. I start with Dan. I choose randomly a word that can follow Dan, fast. And then I choose a word that can randomly follow fast, which is nothing follows fast. So I could have generated, oh, fast shouldn't be in there. Should be said. Yeah, so I could go from Dan to said to so. So in this, in this case, I wouldn't actually be able to generate a new sentence that's not in there, but the sample here is very, very small. Right? We're talking about trying to generate a sample over the entire Alice the Wonderland. So let's break this up into two pieces so we can actually handle it. The first piece I want to do is the actual um, extraction of this information from the text file. I want to generate this dictionary. So that shouldn't be too hard. So why don't we start with Taking, so someone, you said this, um, we're going to open a file and we're going to read the file line by line, right? Uh, let's change our language here so it's a little bit more clear. We're going to read a, a file, which is a book, so we're going to read a book, and we're going to read this book sentence by sentence, or line by line, basically. So if we can figure out how to take one line of a file and put it into this dictionary, then we know how to do it for the whole file, right? So I'm going to do it for, we're going to start small, and then add more and more functionality to our code, which is what you guys should do. You should try to start small, make something work, and then make the uh, behavior of your function more and more robust. Right? You shouldn't start the other way around. Try to write something huge, and then try to deal with all of the errors that you've thrown. Uh, which one do you want to do, Alice or Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Jeez. Tell me how you really feel. OK, um, what day is it today? Tuesday? Is anyone coming to my talk tonight? OK, good. Never mind. <laughs> I'm giving a talk to the math club tonight, but it's the same talk I gave you on neural networks. So I was going to say, if you're going to come, don't, unless you're specifically coming for the free pizza, in which case I understand. Right. <laughs> now everyone perks up. I'm giving a talk tonight from 6 to 8, which I'm not happy about, because when I not like when I elected when I volunteered to give a talk, I assumed it would happen during the day, right? And now I have to stay here till eight. But anyways, uh, it's yeah. Uh, if I open my email, can you all not look? Actually, no. I really shouldn't do that. That that would have been a no. I can't no. 
After class, I'll tell you, after I unplug this thing. Uh, what else do I need? I need a list, I need a dictionary, I need file I.O., right? Oh, text I.O. Uh, okay, so let's take one sentence. Yeah? Huh? Oh, text I.O. Okay, so one sentence, and I'm going to have to return a dictionary. And what are, what's our dictionary going to be? So remember, I want to do this. So our dictionary should be key value pairs where the key is a string and the value is a list of strings. Right, so this should be something like string and then list of string. And then we should be taking in a sentence, which is a string. Uh, what was I calling? I'll, I'll just say processes one sentence into a context dictionary, which is a term I just invented. Dick, Sean, Mary. Uh, okay, so I need, we're going to have a dictionary, accumulate into it, and return it. Um, let's just pick a sentence. Um, probably hello world, eh? Uh, okay, so what do we do here? I need to walk through the sentence. So I'm definitely going to have to look at each word of the sentence. So what do I do? Yeah. Uh, split by, uh, uh, yes, but I'll just mention that it's actually split automatically uh, operates on spaces. Right. So it's just a, we can just say um, sentence is the sentence dot split. Right. And this should convert the string into a list of words, right? So our sentence has now turned into a list of words. Now what do I want to do? Well, so I want to look at the, like, I really wish I could use a zip here. I wish you guys knew all the stuff that I knew. This course would be so easy, right? Uh, so what we need to do is look at the pairs, right? We need to look at the sentence. We need to walk through the sentence and look at the zero position and the one position, and then the one and the two position. So I am reluctantly, in this case, going to use a uh, actual loop counter, because that's going to be most appropriate in this case. So it's 4k in the range of the length of the sentence, uh, minus one, right? Because remember, I'm going to have to compare. I'm comparing something with the thing that comes after it, which means I can't check the last position because nothing comes after it, OK? So I'm going to do this, uh, and I'm going to, uh, OK, so I want to say something like this. H of sentence at k uh, gets appended uh, sentence at k plus 1. Right, so this is the word at k and the word at k plus 1. Why, why is this destined to do, why is this doom in the future? No, it's even it's even smaller than that. Yeah. This index doesn't exist yet, right? You can't just you can't. So, if I have a dictionary, you can't just key into it, right? Uh, what? Hmm. Well, the point is, if I have an empty dictionary, you can't just. Uh, Create, uh, you can't just depend onto this because it doesn't exist, right? The you have to first create a base value for this, and now you can append, right? So the point is, is there there is no item with this key yet. I'm screwing this. I'm just going to say it like this. We first have to check if the key exists in the in the dictionary. So if sentence at k is in h, right? Then I can append. Otherwise, uh, it's not in H, and I have to do this. Right, so either it has been initialized and you can append, or it hasn't been initialized, in which case you should initialize it to this empty, uh, to the singleton of the new word I just found. Is that clear? Right? You're going to have to do something like this every time you work with dictionaries because you can't just insert into a dictionary. You first have to check that the key exists. Now you can use some of the built-ins. I think there may actually be a dictionary add 
which handles this for you. But I think this is more, at your level, it's better to like use as few built-ins as you can. Because I want you guys to actually see what is happening. Uh, okay, so this should work already. So let's give it a try. Yeah. What has happened? Eh. Okay. Anyone see my error? No, it's not it. Go away. Oh, it's a typing error. Did I do this? Maybe I don't have to put this, those brackets there. Oh, I need square brackets. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so what happens if we take one sentence and we give it, hello, this is my world. Okay, great. We need some better tests. Hello, this, hello, is, hello, my world. Is this correct? Is goes to... Yes, okay, so this seems okay. So there's one caveat, though. Well, what we've lost some pieces of information already. So, shh, like nothing, like hell, in this example here, Dan is not going to show up, like nothing can go to Dan, right? Dan is like the, the starting point in each of these cases. So, should we somehow have a special index for the first word in a sentence? Like, should we do something like this? Uh, we should instantiate our dictionary to uh, empty string. And then the uh, first thing in our sentence, because right, that would now give us, right? Now it says that we, like, hello can follow an empty string, which we can interpret as, oh, hello can begin a sentence, right? Because I asked you this question about how do we choose the first word in our sentence, and this would be a good start, right? Well. Look at all the sentences in the book and just choose one of the words that starts one of those sentences. And that should be okay. Uh, what about this? Uh, more specifically, what should we do with punctuation? Should we dump it or should we keep it? Keep it and use it to determine what words in the sentence. That's not a bad idea. Uh, I agree. So these questions I'm asking aren't like something I'm trying to determine the correctness of. I'm, I'm asking legitimately what your opinion is for this problem. I'm interested who can come up with the system that best generates gibberish. So, okay, let's agree to put in our dictionary uh, this, right? All the words that start words. And uh, let's agree to keep punctuation so that we know when to end our sentences. Okay, so this is one sentence. So now what I want to do is uh, read a whole book, right? One book. Uh, this book has to take a file pointer, which is text.io. And then this should return this funny dictionary. OK. Now we encountered some problems in the other class. Be huh? I really want it to go there. OK. So here's my initial dictionary. Let's return it in the end. OK, so what we're going to have to do is walk through. So for a sentence in uh, the file pointer, like in the book, I want to then process the sentence. All right, so I'm just going to grab this code. Now, I have to be careful. So I still have to split the sentence, but this can no longer live here because it would reset the dictionary after every loop. 
Right, so below here is my, my code for, for a single sentence. Right? Just from here. So this should work, except I've now lost. Yeah? Maybe you can uh, split the book by, like, split at period, and then run one sentence on each sentence. I can't split. I'd have to read the whole book into memory to split it on a period, and that's generally a bad idea. You have to regard a file as something you only have access to line by line. Yeah. Maybe you stop reading at a period and then continue reading after you're done with that sentence. What is this trying? What is this fixing? I mean, like you don't need to consider that you can use the function you already did. I am using the function that I've already used. You just copy, like, copying the, the code. Yeah, I'm copying the code. Well, let me just do it this way. Like, I just wrote that other piece of code so, so we, in order to move it here, right? I don't want to, like, pull apart my code into too many pieces. Um, okay, so we want to go, so for one sentence, this should work, okay? Do you guys know how to use a break? Did I show you this? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I just want to ensure that I can read a single line of this and it's going to work. I'm showing you how to like be careful with how you're coding, right? So let's just ensure that after reading, like, so this break is just going to read in one sentence and then kill the program and return age. Okay, so let's see what we got. I, how do I open a file again? It's open. I think it was Lord of the Rings 1.txt for reading. Great. Uh, let's give it, no, book. Book. Uh, what? This doesn't seem to be defined, okay. Uh, one book, and I give it the Lord of the Rings, and it should return, yeah, error, exactly as I wanted. Oh boy. Oh, okay, it's not reading the file properly. Uh, nine? Ah. Uh, oh no, Lord of the Rings 1.txt. No, I'm here. So this is uh, weird. How come I can't read? Someone tell me how to read a file. Please. File pointer is e equal to open, right? Lord of the Rings 3.txt for reading. Read line. Someone help. Yeah. Uh, no, my, is it in the wrong well, let me try reading an Alice then, because that worked yesterday. But then all of your Tolkien fans are going to be pissed at me. OK, Alice is working. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, try one of the, I'll try one of the other Lord of the Rings, and otherwise I'm giving up. Okay, then how should I read? What's the what's the? It's an UTF-8. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm not. Okay, hold on. I'll do one more thing. I'll try to copy this, and I'll make my own file. I told you guys, text IO is one of the most expensive things that you can do in a computer. Good, for good God, how long is this book? You guys actually read this? Oh my God. 
Okay, well, I'm going to let that do that. And in the for the time being, let's just read in Alice, right? Because how much time do we have? Oh, 20 minutes. Okay, good enough. Okay, so I've read in Alice now. Okay, so let's look at our one book uh, function. Let's give it the file pointer for Alice this time. And this should return a, our dictionary for the very first sentence. Okay, great. So I can do it for one sentence. I'm going to take out this break. And it should now do it for the whole book. Okay. okay. So let's just see. Oh, I didn't set the dictionary equal to anything. Okay. Um, so we can sort of try and test this. Like there should be a lot of stuff that follows the. Right? Perfect. Oh, I didn't, I have to, I reset the file pointer. Wow, a lot of stuff. Okay, so like this is, this is how I want now the generation to work, right? So we have this intermediate data structure. It's not quite ready yet, but it, our, our code is going to work something along the lines of this. Uh, we're going to start maybe with the. Uh, so this is our word. And we have a word and we have a next word. Right, so the is the word, and the next word should be, oh, I need to write one more thing. Uh, does anyone know how to randomly select something from a list? Is there a list command for that? No, okay, we can, we can just write it, yeah. Oh, there's a random dot choice? Okay, so import random. Uh, I'm just going to write def uh, choose random word from uh, a set of words, which is a list of string. And I'm going to return a string. OK, so what was it? Random.choice? Yeah, random.choice. I'm trying to concentrate. Uh, OK, so I have a random.choice function. Let's see if that works. Random, say word, oh, choose random word, choose random word from hello A, B. Let's see if this works. Okay, great. Okay, so this is how this is, how this is going to work. So let's, let's get the file pointer for Alice in Wonderland. Let's send it through our processor. Okay, so this is how I sort of want to generate words to the book. So here's a word, and this is the next word. So suppose our first word is the. The next word is going to be choose a random word from here at the word. Let's see if this will work. Okay, I can't do that. Uh, w is equal to the. Next word is equal to h at w. So it's going to look at all the things that follow the. And then it's going to choose a random word from this. So the first word is the. The next word is the Cheshire. Uh, cat said seven. <laughs> that, that, OK, so that's our sentence. Right? The Cheshire cat said seven. Right? That's actually not even gibberish. Right? That, I think this is a grammatically correct sentence. So amazing. We've generated something sensible with so little effort. Um, okay, so now I want to write. Okay, so I, I want to add that special uh, symbol for knowing when what is the first line of a sentence. Uh, so here, maybe I just want to say this is empty. And then when I, oh, this isn't working. How is this? Oh, that's the, I'm in the wrong. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't need it. Uh, here I am. So now I just want to say, okay, let me make a default value here for the beginning of words. I don't have any yet. So now I want to say uh, h at empty. Uh, gets appended the first 
character in this sentence. This is the thing where I want to identify every first word in each sentence. <laughs> the problem is, <coughs> is there are some empty lines in the file. So I'm going to have to first ensure that the sentence isn't empty. So um, well, I'll just do this, if you'll let me. So I'm going to split the sentence. Um, well, before I even do that, I'm going to say, if not sentence, uh, oh, you guys don't know next. Hmm. OK, so if not sentence, sorry, if sentence, which means the sentence has something in it, then we can do it. Otherwise, we're going to skip. So let's see if this still works. Uh-oh. If sentence. So I'm getting our sentence out of range. Let me put this here then. Let's try this again. Okay, so now I should have a list of all the words that begin sentences. These are all the words that begin sentences. And when we're generating new sentences, this would be a good place to start, I reckon. Okay, so I can read a book. I'm just going to change this to random word. Okay, so the last thing I want to do today, and I think we can manage this in the last 10 minutes, is uh, generate sentence, or gen sentence. So I'm going to do this in two pieces again. Let's generate one sentence, and then we can just use this sentence to generate an arbitrary number of sentences. So you have to give me the dictionary, the context dictionary. I'm going to name that H. And this is going to return a string, right? We're going to return our sentences as sentences and not list of words. OK, so how do we do this? Well, I have to accumulate some answer. It's going to accumulate beginning at the end empty string, I'm going to return this, and what do I want to do? I want to say, um, yeah? Can you maybe while the word doesn't contain a Yeah, that's a good idea. So just let me set answer to, uh, so I want to take H, I want to look at all of these words that begin sentences, and then I want to choose a random word of over that. Yeah? OK, so let's just make sure that this is working. I want to be very careful uh, when doing this. Uh, generate sentence with H. So this should, gen this should be a one word sentence that this returns. Ah, oh, beautiful. Uh, so when we're looking for punctuation, we should specifically look for a period. Yeah. Uh, OK, so what I'm going to do. Period, question mark, and exclamation mark. Oh, yeah. Uh, sentence terminals are what? Uh, exclamation mark, question mark, period. This, this is how we know that, it, that something has ended. OK, so while true, what do I want to do? I want to, so my old word is, uh, oh, geez. No, I have to do it like this. So my word, my first word, my, so my old word is this, and my new word, okay, so old word, new word. So old word is this. Uh, so the new word is going to be uh, a random word from H at things that come after the old word, right? And then I want to take my answer. I know I'll fix everything. Answer, and I want to append this new word, and then I want to say new word, old word is equal to new word. Yeah? And it would be better to just like reassign the value to old word, and because then the, the loop just needs to like, it'll just say, okay, we, like, we, like we did it before, we just have a double new variable. Yep, I think you're right. I think I just have to say old word is equal to this. Yeah, I don't even need this old new word stuff. We're not appending because we're building a sentence. And I actually forgot to include a, I probably should include a space. Yeah. So these things are actually spaced out. 
Okay, so while word, while the last thing of our word is not in the sentence terminals, right? Yes. Where? Oh, here. Okay, so what this is going to do is going to choose a word from the set of words that begin sentences in Alice in Wonderland. Then it's going to generate a new word in the manner I showed you in the terminal, and it's going to do so until it hits a uh, word with a terminal in it. Yeah. Oh, then I'll just okay. Uh, I just have to do this. Yep. Okay. Not the cleanest code, but you try coding in front of a hundred people. Uh, okay, so I sh this should generate a gibberish sentence if I've done this correctly. Oh, hold on, I also forgot to put here. So, okay, our first nonsense sentence is least I fancy who's to the griffin. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can generate some better gibberish than that. Hmm? What's happening? It's, uh, maybe it's starting with a word that has no, uh, has no E in the dictionary. Like it's checking the last word. That is true, so we have some bugs. So like maybe what's screwing this up is we should be we should have stripped punctuation. Well, I don't know, then we'd have to use the statistical information and just say stop stop adding new words. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are all good ideas. Like, I'm going to post all of this information online, and you guys should go and play with this as well. But like, let's really focus and try to get this to generate like a bunch of sentences before we go, so we can feel accomplished today. Uh, okay, so why? What's happening with my generate sentences? Yeah, why is there an apostrophe here? I guess because it reaches its space and there are apostrophes in the end of any sentence without that. Oh. Yeah, we probably should have like we may, like, so welcome to the world of data cleaning. Right? Like when you download tons of data, like you're, you're gonna have to spend hours and hours and yeah. Because we're starting with the running board, but well in the sentence here, like the apostrophe. And the apostrophe. Yeah. These are all the words that should begin a sentence. So let's look at the nature of the error here. Can like let's at least figure out what is happening. Right? So what it's saying that there is no okay, so I'm trying to key into the dictionary when there is no word associated with it. Right. Okay. So maybe I should say h dot get. Right? Okay, let's give that a try. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to add another condition here. So while the last while word is not in sentence and word in H. Is there questions up there? Like, there's a lot of chatter, right? I know this may be boring, but you could at least try and help me. You have a comma in Huh? Uh, 
Oh, no, 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 I changed it to random word, yeah. Okay, that's better. Oh, geez, there's brackets in this book? So, like, there's a lot of stuff now that, like, so this is why next lecture we're doing a version 2.0, right? This lecture was supposed to be for us to try something, to find a list of potential issues, of which we found a bunch, right? In the other class, we found that empty lines are potentially dangerous. Here, we're learning that the data that we're reading in needs to be cleaned, at least a little bit more than we have. So, next class, let's try to also clean the data. No, oh, that's a nice set. Asked Alice, cautiously replied, counting. Samuel the March Hare was sitting on puzzling question and ending with a day. You should never follow a semicolon with and. It's a bad AI, right? Okay, shh. Give me five minutes and I'll let you go. You can talk your heads off. Okay. When's the next time we're meeting? Wednesday. Wednesday, I, I want you guys to have thought how we can improve this program. Beyond like, not just like, I'll make it work. I'll go and write code today that will clean this. I want to write something more sophisticated. How can we write a more sophisticated program that's going to generate better gibberish than this, right? And think about how we can clean the, uh, clean the data, right? So we get better results. But here's all, yeah, here's gibberish sentences. Oh, my throat. And Alice was passing out her face. And who knows, right? <laughs> Bottom of neck, which she took the three little dog growls when she opened his nose. Okay, so I'll also have Lord of the Rings. You guys can go, but I'll also have Lord of the Rings working, hopefully. And maybe I can get this Dr. Seuss thing going. But please come with ideas on Friday. Ah, oh, Wednesday. Wednesday.